at Freaky Night, the Freaky's Ball Time once again. Friday night right here on RealLibertyMedia.com, August 9, 2019. Welcome to the show, y'all out there, all y'all freaks. <laughs> and uh, let me say hi and howdy to all the folks that are out there in all the various places they may be, uh, especially starting off at the most important place, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freaker's Ball show page. Or if you're watching via Vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media, welcome to you all as well. Whoever may be tuned in over there, I don't know who that might be, but welcome to you. Uh, those that are listening on the audio stream, which you could be tuned in from RLMRadio.xyz or right there on RealLibertyMedia.com. Uh, you could be tuned in directly on RealLiberty.org or FreedomsNetwork.com. Maybe on TuneIn. Uh, or, or on internet radio, or uh, Shotcast, or, well, other places that you may be tuned in from. So, uh, welcome to everybody out there. Uh, and uh, especially welcome to all the freaks right here in the chat room here on RealLibertyMedia.com, uh, IRC.Freenode.net, Pound Pound, or Real Liberty Media. Yes, we got a great group of folks here, we always do. We got the barman in the Beatle, Mr. Cowboy Tech himself. The, uh, myself and the Moose Girl are here in the chat as well. Uh, Moose, Girl, Moose Girl said she would probably be slightly late, but that she will be here, so stick around for her for sure. We all love the Moose Girl, especially here on the Freakers Ball. Uh, we got Mr. DC and Anti and Asmodeus. The Asmodeus, Asmo, Chalcedony, Miss Graham Z. Now, if, in case you didn't hear Graham Z's program earlier to this evening, Grammy's rocket chair that runs from 7 to 9 each Wednesday and Friday night. Uh, as of August 30th, which is a Friday, she will be um, taking a hiatus for some period of time from Grammy's rocket chair. So listen up uh, till, you, till, you, till she goes away. And, and she'll be back whenever she gets back, whenever she gets has time to to uh, get back to doing radio once again. But uh, she will, at that point in time, start uh, taking some days off there. So uh, we'll be sad to not have her every Wednesday and Friday. But, you know, she has a life. And that life needs to be handled in certain ways. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll miss her. We'll miss her. We got I.B. Dante. We got the Java Doctor. We got Mr. Meister Brow. The Ponder Gander, uh, he did a he, Ponder Gander slash Vin E uh, did a show earlier today. His his program that he does, the Ponder Gander show. The uh, so uh, that's on, that's on the uh, podcast thing up there. If you missed his show, we got Mister Rob Works in the bubble. We got, we got Rome's up on the roof singing his song up on the roof. We got the Van and White Bot in Mister uh, Vin E, the other half of Ponder Gander there. The Weather Dork Bot, who now does Google searches for you there in the chat. Uh, we got Phantom and Circle and Cyborg Noodle. Oh, by the way, if you want to still do Duck Duck Go searches, you can do those as well. Uh, my client will give you the feedback on those. Um, just how it works. Uh, <laughs> it's not me giving you the answers, although it's coming from my client. So you'll see it as me. We got Miss Circle. Did I mention her? Ah, uh, yeah, the great Miss Circle in the Cyborg and Noodle uh, and the Civ, Mr. Frumpy, hey, Frumpstar, and uh, Gromit and JJ's and Kiss and Prince and the Pone Sauce and uh, Mr. Sock Puppet, uh, Carpenter Extraordinaire, and the Smart Eyes. Uh, so all, all kinds of great folk here in the in the chat room this evening, along with us for the ride, as it were. Um, I should mention, I am operating at a, um, a handicap, in a handicap mode here this evening. I have, I have an eye thing going on. One of my eyes, my right eye, um, has something going on. And I, I, I've, I've had these before and I, I know what, what it's like when I feel them coming on. And it's, it's more, um, annoying and distracting, I would say, than painful, although, it is slightly painful, uh, but I'm trying to get ahead of it this time. I, I've, I've, uh, I'm hitting up the heavy, heavy on the echinacea and the sea. 
to to try and uh, tamp down on this thing before it uh, gets out of control because these things when I get them they will turn into a sty uh, after a day or two and then it'll take several days for that to go away and I really hate those things you know but uh, they I get them like once every couple of years something like that I don't know where the hell from but uh, they they come and 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 so I'm working on that working trying to trying to trying to make sure it doesn't get too out of uh, too much annoying and painful such things like that so uh, yeah there's there's that thing going on in my eye um <laughs> uh, um i i uh i ordered for uh, i had um two toilets that had one of them had a a uh, uh, what would you call it? Maybe a, a slow drip through through the through the flapper valve, and another one that it just never quite seemed to fit. Uh, the one that's in my my half bath over on the other side of the house. Uh, anyway, so I ordered two flapper valves, and um, and, and they came in today, and I and uh, so I I went to the, this uh, one hallway bathroom here, and uh, super easy, put that thing right in, boom boom. Uh, no, no more, no more slow drip there coming out of that flapper valve. So I, it was getting to where it would be like at, once an hour or something. You'd hear like a not really a flush, but maybe like a a quarter flush or a third flush, uh, something like that amount. It, w it wasn't really that big of a deal, but it was kind of annoying, especially if like I'm taking a shower when that thing comes on because all of a sudden the shower would get really hot. <laughs> So anyway, put that in. Took me like ten minutes. Whatever. Boom. So I go over to that other bathroom. And this other bathroom, let me tell you, I had a plumber here one time. Oh, I don't know, several years ago, to replace my uh, hot water heater. And uh, when, when he was here, I told, asked him if he would take a look at that at that toilet and, and see if he could figure out because I had tried to replace the uh, uh, the flapper valve on that before, and, and it just I never it never seemed to to be the right thing. And, uh, hey, hey, Moose Girl's here. Uh, so, um, anyway, so I, I checked it out. I mean, I, look, I looked down in there before I ordered the valves to make, to make sure, the flappers, to make sure it was the right thing. And it looked exactly like the same one. Uh, anyway, so then I got, I go in there with this thing, and it's like, well, it, the chain thing didn't reach. I mean, it should have been just like my other one, because they're the same brand of toilet, everything's the same. And then I realized the problem. <laughs> whoever whoever put the little uh, riser in there, uh, the little, it's like a little pivot riser where where, you, where the, the flapper valve connects onto the the bottom part of the toilet. There, they put it on the wrong side. There, there's there's a, there's two bolts that come up that hold the tank to the bowl, and uh, they they put it on the wrong side. So the flapper valve was always going. It was in there backwards. It was like I, I never could make sense of it and that that plumber who looked at my toilet back then back in those days he said well i can't figure it out man there's something weird here uh maybe you just need to get a whole new toilet and i was like yeah i don't, I don't think so just for a flapper thing uh, anyway so i figured it out today uh <laughs> now i'm gonna have to try and take that bolt out that holds the uh, uh that side that one side of the uh tank to the bowl there and then, you know, you know how they get all corroded and rusty and stuff like that. So uh, that'll be something to do over the weekend there. Uh, at least I figured it out. Now I know why it never fit. It never worked. <laughs> Stupid ass thing. Um, anyway, toilet flappers are cheap, man. Just uh, order them up and uh, they're really simple to put in. And they come with new handles and chains and all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so. Anyway, there's that. <laughs> Oh, another thing going on in my life is is my garden, and I've talked about my garden on here on oh so many occasions. I don't know how many occasions, but uh, I, I've it's growing pretty good. Various plants are growing pretty good. Uh, the watermelon plant, it's just two plants there, but they're they, they're spreading out and they got the flowers on them. And my 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 cantaloupe plants, I've got like I don't know hundred flowers growing on those things. And and also on the honeydew melon and on the tomato plants, they all got they all got flowers growing on them. 
but I don't, they're, they're not, there's no fruit coming out yet. And, and, and I think the problem is, and I could be wrong on this, I, I don't know, but I have not seen any pollinators coming by. There's been no bees or butterflies or hummingbirds or anything that would pollinate the plants. And, I, and I, that might be a problem. <laughs> because, because the flowers open up in the, every day and then they, they close up in the evening. And, um, and it's, it's weird because they, there's so many flowers. I would think some of them might just like pollinate themselves. I don't know. I read up on the cantaloupe and it, apparently cantaloupe plants have both uh, male and female um, uh, flowers on them, which should pollinate themselves. But and I guess via wind or something, I, I don't know. But um, <laughs> I don't really need melons coming out of my ears, but uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and I do hope to have uh, <laughs> some fruit. It's, it's very late in the season for any fruits to be starting to grow at this point in time. Uh, but the fact that they're growing better now, I guess, uh, that, that's something. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, possibly at least getting some fruits started. Whether or not they grow to maturity is a whole other situation. Ah, Blue Scal! Yes, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, I think that flowers means it's a good thing, Grim. Oh, I did too. I mean, you got to have flour before you can have fruit, right? Yeah. And, and so and, I think you're good. But, I mean, I, but I, like I said, I, I have not seen any pollinators. There's been no bees. No bees at all. I have not seen a single yeah, bee. Yeah, but that, they still get pollinated. Can you hear me? I do, I do. And, and I think you're you're probably right. I know my, my apple tree out in front's got a zillion apples on it. They're just the crab apples, you know, but... Well, uh, I was in Duran last weekend. I stayed at a, a yard, in a, camped in a yard, and the lady had melons. And at this <laughs> point, it's just flowers. It's no melons yet. Okay, okay. So I think you're good still. I think you're still good. Um, oh yeah, I, I water. I water. I, I water the matan. I do a flood watering thing. I oh, I, 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 I built all these channels, uh, canals, okay. whatever you want to call them, trenches. And so I put the the hose there at one side, and it it floods all the way through, doo -doo -doo, going through these little channels and stuff. Um, yeah. So it, it does a real good, uh, yeah, real real, real good uh, thing. But today they got more water than they're going to need for a week. Um, not that Does I will rain. Oh, rain. Yeah, it poured. It well, poured. that's fine. That's poured, fine. Poured heavy. So uh, you don't have to water them for a couple of days, right? Uh, well, we'll see how how well it, how hot it is and how they. Well, dry you have out. to check the soil every day, yeah. right? Yeah, that's ideal. Yeah, yeah. So, but but yeah, I mean, yeah. gardening is not rocket science, but it it does take some. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot you involved. Know. I, there's oh a lot. yeah, there is. You know, I mean, there's, it's not just dirt water. You know what I mean? It's not just. Dirt, seed, water. It's there's a lot more to it than just you know the basics. But it, it, at the same time, it is not rocket science. You know. No, no, it's certainly not rocket. It's science. It's pretty simple, basically. You know, well, the it, concept is simple, but it, the it, practice of it. There's certain tricks and things that you can do to make your garden more productive or whatever. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And and I've read I've read a bunch of things like on the cantaloupes, for example. I. I mean, I, I did not know that there was even a male flower, but apparently there's a male flower and a female there, flower. I think there is for any plant. And, and it tells you how to, how you can take one of the male flowers and sprinkle it on one of the female flowers, and sure. how to recognize which, how to recognize which is which. Right. Um, so, which is good to know for if you're growing weed too. Uh, I'm sure. It is because <laughs> you want to get to get rid of the male plants. Because the 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 well, women yeah. the girl plants are the ones that produce the buds. So. Yeah, you want to get rid of the, the male plants in weed, not in not in watermelons and. Right, right. <laughs> Just in, in weed, you do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, right. Well, you but they still have weed. to be pollinated. Yeah. Right? It, no, it, it's good to good, good to keep some of the males for certain. Well, whatever. yeah. 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 So. For seeds, right? Doesn't the male grow the seeds? Yes. Yeah, so you need seeds. 
Well, the bud has the seeds in it, too. Think oh, about it. Right. You've gotten bud with seeds in oh, it. Oh, tons, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I, I don't think that's exclusive to the male. Right. The seed thing. It, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I don't know. Someone look it up or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a freaking horticulturist. Me either. I mean, I know the basics, but that's about it. I hey, mean, Anti. Uh, welcome there. Hey, Anti. Anti. Anti, Anti. Oh, Rome's. You need to get better, buddy. Thanks for that Thanks. link there, um, uh, Meister Barawa. Stay hydrated, Rome's. Drink lots of fluids. It's not all this, not just coffee and Mountain Dew. You gotta drink actual water or like Gatorade or something. Right. Drink so, a lot of fluids and get some rest. Do not stress out. Just fucking chillax, dude. Yeah. Because yeah. if it's turned into pneumonia, pneumonia, that means when you had your cold, you didn't take good care of yourself, and then it went into pneumonia. And that's what happens is it gets worse. If you don't take care of a common cold, it can get really bad. Right. I'm just saying. So you got to take care of yourself, dude. That's right. Ain't nobody going to do it for you. Exactly. All I right. mean, even though you have family and stuff, you know, it's still up to you. Okay. You're the main person to take care of yourself. Absolutely. You're an adult Absolutely. And, yeah. All right. Let me see. Oh. Let me read this here. Uh, sure, sure. Meister Brow had it, put it in a link here. Gardening know-how. Watermelon plant not producing. How to get watermelons to fruit. Okay. Um, says watermelon's pretty much synonymous with summertime and is likely found at nearly right. every summer celebration. Hurrah! Um, anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but with such popularity, many people try to grow their own, and so doing encounter difficulties, yeah. such as watermelon plants that is not producing. Oh, so it says that there's not enough insufficient bee activity. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there. Like I said, no bees. I, I, I can't believe. Right, you haven't seen. See, I've seen bees here. I've seen bees in my house, at my in my porch, and no all, bees. All the, the yard. No bees. No butterflies. No. Um, no I've seen um, butterflies. I've seen monarchs. The yellow swallowtails. I've no seen hummingbirds. All. I haven't seen any hummingbirds. Really weird. Yep. Do you usually see them though? Well, there was, um, occasionally, but I mean, when, when I when I moved in here, the old woman had had a. Uh, uh, Hummingbird feeder up there. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't have that up there anymore. Maybe that's why right, they're coming around. Right, that's know. why you're not attracting them. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not attracting them. I don't. I don't really know how to attract bees. You have to make a mixture of it's salt. It, I mean, it's not salt. Sugar and water. It's like one part sugar to three part, or one part water to three part sugar. You got to look it up. It's on. You can find yeah. the recipe. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Let's see this. Tells you how to how to pick your watermelons and how to. Uh, okay, Rome's no male no seeds in male plants. Okay, so then the buds too are the weed. The female produces the buds and the seeds in weed and okay. probably every other plant, right? Oh, it says you should plant companion plants that attract bees. Oh, there you go. I don't know what the, I guess it'll tell you that if I look deeper into this. Right. But, uh, yeah, I think it is, I, I there think is it, something to it though. Gardening, you have to know what you're doing. You oh, can't there's, there's a there's a lot involved. There's a lot more involved than I had planned on. Yes, there involved. is. Um, there's a lot more involved. So, but this has links also for cucumber, squash, cantaloupe. Uh, so cool. Well, there you go. Thanks, Woodman. Oh, this is by Amy Grant, isn't she that singer? Yeah, but it could be. A, that's a popular name. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. That's not. Benoit. Hey, ben. hey Benoit. What the hell's going on, man? All right. Um, well, let's play some music here. Uh, okay. And then, uh, yeah, you missed all my opening stories, I guess. Yeah, I did. Sorry uh, about that. Uh, I was at a baseball game, and the Eau Claire Express won the division, so now they're going into playoffs, and it's really okay, awesome. Well, since, since you didn't hear my opening thing, I'll let you, I'll let you just let you know. Is that mm -hmm. you're dealing with a, a semi-handicapped Grimner here this evening. Why? I have an eye thing going on. Uh oh So I can really only see out of one eye this What's evening. What's going on? Oh, it, it's a, you know, I get these every couple of years or so, and it's like uh, the beginning parts of where a sty might come along, but it's just, Oh, okay, but yep. It's, but it's, it's yep. the part that it feels like that you got something in your eye. Yes. 
I but, hate that. But, oh, but you yeah. don't. It, it's just like something on the eyelid itself, on the inside of it. Yes. And uh, so, and yeah. so it, it, I can't really so, see see through that eye. So I'm doing like use one. a hot compress on that. Yeah, yeah. You, no, I've got it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I, I'm hitting up as the. As hot as you can handle it. I'm hitting up the echinacea. I'm hitting up the vitamin C. Right, that'll help. But and, the, uh, the, the thing I used to get them all the time when I was a kid, Graham. And the best thing is a hot washcloth. Just get it as hot as you can stand it and put that right on your on it on the eye. Yeah, yeah, I know. Those, those, are, those are good, and, and, I, and I'll yeah, do that. that. Hot but, compress uh, works good. It's, uh, it's, I don't know if it's quite to that. But those suck. I hate that because you feel like you got something in your eye. You can't do anything about it. You know, right. You can't yeah, get, it's just, yeah, it's yeah, like, ugh. It's, there. it's on your eyelid. It's like, ugh. You know, it's like, ugh. It's so yeah. annoying. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for letting me know. So, yeah, just uh, something I'm dealing with here. All right. Well, are you uh, what, do, what, do, what, what do you call it? I, ID capped. <laughs> yeah, ID capped. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, where's my deal here? Here we go. <laughs> All right, people. Chicken foot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's some nice stuff right there. Let me tell you. <laughs> Joe Walsh doing Funk 49 there at the Guitar Center Sessions on Direct TV. Uh, that was back in 2012 that he did that. Joe Walsh, man, love the guy. All right, before that, we had the Hell Freaks doing Boogeyman, a Freakers Ball Classic. And we kicked it off with Chicken Foot doing Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rock and roll. Nice. Tell you some good stuff. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's a little, it's a, it's a little interesting um, uh, doing uh, doing the uh, doing things with what was one eye because I'm keeping one eye closed pretty much. <laughs> so it's like I guess how, how you would feel if you had a uh, an eye patch or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks, but yeah. it'll it, it'll be a short-lived thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come, they go. Yep. yep. I had a lot of them when I was a kid. Like a lot of them. Oh right. Yeah. Well, I guess I get them every couple of years. I don't know how what happens, but. Yeah. Yeah, whatever, man. Okay, so I have this one story that I found that I had saved. Alrighty. Vice.com. Okay. Dated August 1st, 2019. Oh. And the title of the headline is People are hungry for shroom legislation, and the money to grow it is, the money to fund it is growing. Which, okay, so. We've talked about stories before recently. Or in the near, you know, the last couple of years or whatever, maybe mm-hmm. the last year. I in guess. the near recent, okay. About uh, shroom legalization and the fact that mushrooms have been proven and scientifically proven to cure depression, to help with depression. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Which, that's awesome. It is I awesome. I mean, I think it's great because obviously these... The the fucking the antidepressants that these doctors prescribe do not fucking work. They don't work. They're, well, they, they do, don't work, dude. They, they do a lot of they terrible do, things. What, they make you suicidal. So tell me that's working, okay? You're gonna give a depressed person something that will make them even more depressed and suicidal. Yeah, it sounds kind of uh, the opposite yeah. of antidepressant. Yeah, it's ass fucking methods. It's it's pro depressant. <laughs> yes, and so I am happy about this. And apparently, there's a couple cities already that have decriminalized mushrooms. Right. And maybe one state. Let me read here. And I think somebody actually legalized it. Yeah, Denver. Wait, Oakland for sure. Oakland, California, is like I think Denver's already done it. Oakland's on its way to doing it. Yeah, so it's it's going on a city basis rather than a state yeah, basis. Yeah, correct. Not a state by state. But what I'm saying is, think about the benefits to this. Sure. Okay, we've talked about other magic mushrooms. We've talked about Amita Amanita muscaria, which is the red with the white spots on them. Right. 
and those were the ones. That's why people think that reindeer can fly because reindeer love these goddamn mushrooms. Right? You mean, are you try, are you trying to tell me that reindeer can't fly? Well, they can when they're on Am Amanita muscaria mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> they start jumping around having a party, dude, just like humans do when they're on them, right? Hey, Rob. And so that was the gift that this is the Santa goes in part of Santa Claus myth, though. Yeah. Is there was a saint called Saint Nicholas. Sure. And he would go around a home. Someone would portray him, or he was an actual person. He would go to people's homes and bring the children oranges, and he would bring the adult mushrooms. That, that's a nice guy. I like that yeah, guy. That's a pretty nice gift. I'd be like, thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is mushrooms are a natural substance. Even though they're fungus and some are poisonous, some are not poisonous and are very, very beneficial to people. Sure. Um, I've tripped on mushrooms before. And you I've don't actually say. had conversations with beings from other worlds. I'm sure. You know, and it's and I've been given knowledge while being under the influence of magic mushrooms, yeah. like sacred knowledge. You know sure, that sure, sure. you don't not just anyone gets to hear gets to know. Oh, they yeah they will. Amanita muscaria. Look it up, Rob. I, I, they're like, yeah, let me look it up. All right. Yeah. All right. There we go. Anyway, um, they're called fly agaric. Fly agaric. Yeah, that's like the technical term for them. Okay. But, um, it is hallucinatory, hallucinatory, hallucinatory. I always say that word. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, no, they are. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, well, fresh mushrooms, are, I, okay, the best high you can get on mushrooms is if you do fresh mushrooms, but you're going to puke. But after you puke, you're going to fucking trip your balls off. No, not necessarily. I, we used to get these shrooms out in this one cow pasture down there in San Diego. Those uh, should be good. In the Sereno Valley area. Those should be and, the and right they, one. And they were, they were mild. They weren't like a, a super extreme oh, okay. high. Okay, but were they fresh? Oh yeah, we we used to go out there and pick okay. them, and, and and the damn ranchers would chase us off. But um, but yeah, no, we never got sick from them. I mean, they they even tasted good just fresh out of the. Okay, well, I have before. I've done some fresh mushrooms before one time, and yeah. I ever got it. I puked, but then I had the fucking trip of my lifetime. I'm like, well, holy crap, you know? Yeah. Which it does happen. It can happen, you know, because they don't taste great. But okay, Rob, I trust you, but it does say they're hallucinatory. So maybe I had bad information. I don't know. You know, I, you know. No, but I, I, was, I, was, I was, I was, positive. Hallucinogenic. Yeah. Well, the one article I'm looking at says halluc. Every eaten normally is toxic and hallucinatory. Well, yeah, even the blue ringers are freaking toxic. That's why you get off. It's just not toxic enough to kill you. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says here, and I'm looking at a page called arrowwid.org. Mm -hmm. uh, psychoactive amanitas. Um, psychoactive, see? Yeah. They are. They they do affect you. This uh, is why reindeer love them, too. Psychoactive, psychoactive amanitas are mushrooms which contain the psychoactive chemical ibotenic acid and muscamol. They have a long history for use in Asia, Northern Europe. Okay. They're best known for their distinctive appearance, bright reds with uh, yellow and white spots. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful. There are many species of mushrooms in the Amanita yes. genus. Which, you need to know uh, what you're which, doing. Which are not... Don't just pick some mushroom and go, oh, I'm going to trip and the, eat the, it. Yeah, the, that's not a good idea. All right, there's many, many that are not psychoactive. Right. Some are deadly poison and others are edible. Right, you have to know what you're doing when it comes to mushrooms, because you you you, it, you could kill yourself. <laughs> you know, this is what my question was for a long time was like, who was the first person to try the mushrooms? Like, if you tried one that was a psilocybin, 
you'd be fine. If you tried one that wasn't, you'd be dead. It's like, so who do they sign up to try these goddamn things? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, let like, me tell you, the uh, the ones that, that um, we used to pick, uh, first time we yeah. got some, we weren't absolutely 100% positive. Although well, really, we, on cow shit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they're on cow shit, those are the right ones. Well, and, and we, you know, had books and things, and but we weren't really sure. Right, so, you didn't know. So your right? question is, who did they get to try it out? The first time, yeah. right? They, you me, know, who me. was the guinea pig to be like, hey, here, this one's poisonous. They, 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 they got me. We don't That's know if it's poisonous or not, but we need someone to test this out. They got this me. This could kill you, <laughs> but we need someone to test it. <laughs> yes, and, and I was that person. Were you? You were the first one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good for you, Graham. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. But. Uh, yeah. It was like, well, I don't know, everything I've read and everything I've seen, and we we, we had books with pictures and everything, but, you know, you don't, you don't know. You're out there in the field picking right. these things. Right, and, But uh, my point, I guess, uh, my main point for this sharing and talking about the story is that... Where's your link? So Give many link. people... Let me get... Uh, didn't I link it? Yeah, okay. I didn't see it. Anyway, so many people are suffering from this, which can be fixed naturally... Without having to go to the doctor to get a prescription, without, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's so many other things you can do to combat depression without getting a freaking pill. Oh, yeah, tons, yeah. You no. Know? So I need to go mushroom picking soon. Sure, you should have plenty up there. Yeah, now, now I, I this don't... is August. This is the best <laughs> time to pick magic mushrooms up here. Now, I, I, I don't know... Um, what they are, and I haven't really investigated it too closely, but uh -huh. I have this big wooden pot that I'm growing yeah. tomato that I'm growing tomatoes in. Okay. And there's some mushrooms growing in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you know what kind they are, no, Yeah, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm uh, I'm not gonna uh, probably. You're won't. not gonna trip on sh drugs or acid or shrooms uh, or acid anymore. No, no, I'm probably just not gonna test those. Well, no, <laughs> no I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna go into the the tomato plant there and. <laughs> yeah, one time I was tripping on mushrooms. I was up at Lake Camatogan, which is a glacial shield lake. It's like half in Canada and half in the U.S. Right, and it's up yeah. in northern Minnesota, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And it was the 4th of July, and we were just tripping our balls off. We were just tripping balls, dude, laughing our fucking asses off. And see, that's what we tried to do, is we try to do it in cool places, you know what I mean? Because it's just, it's just so much better. You know? Yeah, no, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll never forget that one. That was one of my first times ever doing shrooms, and I laughed my freaking ass off. That was so fun. Mm -hmm. My stomach hurt. That's how hard I laughed. <laughs> My stomach muscles hurt. That's how hard I was laughing. Yeah. But anyway, um, you know, if they can help with depression, I'm all for that because absolutely. Obviously, these prescription antidepressants don't work. Right. They're not working. If they make you more suicidal, you know, oh doc, I need some help with depression. Oh here, take this pill. It might make you suicidal. <laughs> It's like, what, you want me to kill myself? <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on, buddy. You know, I just, you know, you got to be your own advocate. You got to do what's right for you. Make your own decisions. Do your own research. Don't let someone tell you what the hell to do. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just, yeah, you can't do that. No, you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> Here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you want a you you stupid story about about um, yeah your hometown? Yes. Minneapolis? Sure. <laughs> sure. I can handle it. And not that this would affect anybody here. I don't really. live there now. So. <laughs> not, not that this would affect anybody here, really, if this happened in their town, but it's happened in Minneapolis. Okay. And it's stupid. It's stupid as hell. All right. Minneapolis just banned drive throughs I saw that. I saw something on it, there before I like, went to the game. I'm like, what What do they mean by it? What do they mean? Fast food drive throughs Yeah, yeah. Drive -thrus? 
Okay, well, let's just see what it says here. Min Minneapolis okay. City Council has banned drive throughs A move proponents say will make roadways safer. Really? And make the air <laughs> cleaner. <laughs> uh, drive through windows such as those at fast food joints or, ironically, liquor stores. Yeah, drive through liquor stores? All right. Um, yeah, are, we did have a few. <laughs> there are a few there. Party. All right. Are not that widespread in the... Uh, Paris of the High Plains. What? <laughs> the Paris of the High Plains? That makes no fucking sense yeah, at all. That's that, a stupid ass yeah, comment mini, statement. Minneapolis is the Paris of the no, High Plains. No, it is not, and that is a stupid ass statement. Anyway, accor saying. according Your to the, got that one. the guy must be high on shrooms or something. According to the local news site Wedge Live, and even though existing drive-throughs will be grandfathered in, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. The, the zoning reform could still have important safety implications. I wouldn't be so much worried about the, uh, the safety or clean air stuff, but uh, talk about non-business friendly. Uh, right. You want to stop, I mean, stop businesses. Uh, research has shown that areas around fast food restaurants are especially dangerous, really, for pedestrian because drive throughs require more driveways, which introduce potential points of conflict. Oh, come on. Are people getting run over in the fast food driveway? Or, you know, <laughs> the drive throughs are open late, and the workers get harassed, or they take out, they order, and then they don't can't pay. Well, or... they're, they're not mentioning any of that. That's not oh, okay. really part of it. But it says, plus, drivers tend to be distracted just before they have ordered their food and moments right. when they start driving away with it because they're still trying to get their straw into the drink, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, a, floor, a Florida study found that each fast food restaurant in a new low-income block added an average of 0 0.69 pedestrian crashes every four years. Oh, my gosh. Uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell were all associated with greater risk of severe injuries. I wouldn't be, you know, I'd be far more worried about the food these people are eating from those places. Oh, yeah. No kidding. That's more of a concern than the. the I mean, yeah. I mean, you got to worry about less than one percent every four years of of pedestrian possible accidents, people moving at a very slow rate of speed, versus right. the fact that they're eating toxic junk. Um, yeah. Yeah, they talk about the drive through like that's the worst thing about fast food. <laughs> it's like no, that's not. Yeah. Wow. Here, eat all the toxic food you want. You just have to walk inside to get it now. Uh, right. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> wow. The, the Minneapolis City Council said the measure would improve air quality by reducing idling, incrementally helping the cities comply with the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. If you want to uh, stop the idling, then shorten those red lights, because those red lights right. go on forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're sitting I a lot... I hate the lights in Eau Claire. You're sitting at, you're too sitting fucking at the light long. Uh, forever. I'm sorry, Greg. Yeah, you're just... I mean, you're sitting down at these red lights forever. And, and yeah, it's like, what the fuck? I'm wasting gas. There's no cars coming in the other direction, because they have them set for a time. They're not set, like... Per, you know what I mean? Right, right. You can set them a certain way. You can set these lights for a length of time. And in Eau Claire, these lights are set way too long, dude. It's annoying as hell. It is totally annoying. Yeah. Totally annoying. So, anyway, yeah, I, these these people, they uh, they want to go after an easy That's mark. That's insane. Again. It's just another stupid thing. It's just like, what the hell, people? <laughs> Get a get a light. I mean, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. anyway, that that link that I just posted is I, really cool because that's where they used to bring the. It's Dell's Pond. Yeah. And it's right in Eau Claire, and that's where they used to bring. It's part of the Chippewa River, but it's a pond. It's, ba it's pretty big. It's basically a lake. Now, but people, that's where they used to bring the logs in do, from do the people river. Go there and do that. You can get them to the sawmill. Uh, do, do people go there and do that thing where you run on the log? That's up in Hayward they do that, the Lumberjack World Championship. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Hayward is a huge logging history town because that's where they got the logs. Yeah, yeah. Up in Hayward. Right. Up there. You know, that's where they did the logging, got the actual trees, then they'd send them down the river, that's down to Eau Claire, yeah. or Chippewa, and Stop when they went, came to Eau Claire, they'd sit in Dell's Pond here. 
and those what those guys are doing standing on those tops of tops of those logs, that's a very dangerous job. No doubt. <laughs> that's a very dangerous fucking job because if you fall, you're gonna get crushed by logs. And yep, shit. yep, yep. I mean, seriously, you can seriously. It was a very dangerous logging in general back in the day. Was very dangerous work. Well, I'm sure it's still very dangerous. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. It still is, but um, they don't do it the same way they now. They truck it. Yeah. They put it on trucks. They don't send it down the river anymore. You know. Right. Yeah. Rob, but, Rob um, makes a good point there. It's, it's okay to kill yourself with toxic junk, but. Killing someone with your car costs the insurance company's money. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, there's the hook. <laughs> there's the fucking hook. And the other side there's of it is... There's always the hook. Yeah, the other, side, the, other, the other side of that is if you eat a bunch of toxic junk, then, then the medical companies make a lot more money. Well, yeah. yeah you the know, hospitals you, and the, and the doctors and, you know, and the pharmaceuticals. Yeah. 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 They, they all make a lot of money. They'll sell you all that diabetes crap. and Yeah, it's a vicious fucking circle. That's why, like, <laughs> some people, like, when I say, they're like, you know, if you have to go to a doctor, you have to do something, you know, give blood or something. They're like, are you on any medication? I'll just be like, no. Do you want to be? They'll be like, oh. really? They'll be like, really? <laughs> like, they're shocked. But I'm yeah. on no medication. No prescribed medication whatsoever. They're like, really? Oh, you're lucky. It's like, no, I'm no. not lucky. I'm fucking smart. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ! I'm not one of your drones. Eh? I don't want your shit. You know, yeah. I don't want your shit. Yeah. I don't want your vaccines. I don't want your meds. I don't want nothing. Right. No, we haven't seen that man for a long time, Rob. In the chat, anyway. But speaking of fast foods, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what to make it think of this, but uh, here it is for you from NewScientist.com. Um, mm. Staring down seagulls can stop <laughs> them from stealing your chips. I believe that and seagulls are they can be really relentless. And, and, it, and it's a Brit article, so chips is a, is a, is a uh, right. uh, potato is a French fries. Right, right, right. And it says the threat. And of, the, seagulls love French fries. Yeah. Does the threat of having your ice cream or chips pilfered by ice cream? They eat ice cream pilfered by a seagull will be a fam familiar to anyone they who goes anything, dude. Uh, on seaside holidays in the UK. But a study suggests there is a way to, to keep avian scavengers at bay. Keep your eyes on them. Uh, Matt, Matt oh, Lim, yeah, smart. Uh, Madeline Gomez at the University of Exeter and her colleagues ran an experiment with 19 seagulls in seaside towns. 19? That's like nothing. Uh, and he's in Cornwall. The experiment placed a bag of chips on the ground and crouched behind it one and a half meters away. When a seagull approached the chips, she started a stopwatch and either stared at the goal or looked in another direction. Uh, when they were being watched, only 26% of the goals touched the chips. Now let me just stop there and say this. So if one in every four seagulls is touching your food, are you still going to eat it after that? They're freaking dirty. <laughs> this is those that did not touch the food took around 20 seconds longer to do so when they were being watched. Or that did touch the food. So they took a little longer. They... Uh oh, this guy's watching me here. I'm not going to eat his chips without... Oh, he's he's looking at me. <laughs> apparently, it's this show... Apparently, this shows that seagulls are sensitive to the human gaze and change their behavior when they are being watched. Even though gulls seem like they do this a lot in some areas, uh, there seems to be a few individuals that are responsible for the majority of food snatching. So you, you, got, the, you got the brave seagulls, just like you do with any birds. Um, I, I've watched the, the crows in my yard, and um, and and they'll go after other birds. Certain crows will, but not oh, all. Oh, crows are they can be mean. Yeah, sir, certain crows go after the. the I'm uh, friends with the cool crows in my neighborhood. But, but, but when, when the crows they know aren't when there, I'm cool. when yeah. the crow, when the crows aren't there, if there's pigeons around, the pigeons will go after the right. uh, the, yep. the sparrows or the swifts or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and they're 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 just as mean, man. Those fucking seagulls, they'll dive bomb you. Oh yeah, we used to. You're out there in some open mark. You're sitting there at like along some water, having a nice one. Then seagulls just dive bomb me. See, and, like, see, take your shit. See, <laughs> seagulls used to shit on people all the time at my oh, uh, junior God, high school. Bad, yeah. you, you'd be out there at, your, at, at the lunch thing, and the seagulls would fly through, and they just shit on people. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I've been up to Duluth. And Duluth's oh, right on Lake Superior. And there's a, you go to that McDonald's that's right there and on, right right close to the lake. Yeah. There's like 50 to 100 seagulls flying above over your head. Yeah. And they're flying and they're landing around you. It's, it's, they're really fucking like, annoying. I mean, it's, seriously, there's a lot of them. It's yeah, really they're, annoying. They're just, they're just filthy birds. I, I... Yeah, they are. They call them flying rats up in Duluth. I thought pigeons were the flying rats. Well, those two. Oh. We call those the... That's what we call them here in Eau Claire. Oh. Right. The pigeons. We, we have some seagulls here, too. But they're mostly on the river. They're mostly on the Lake Altoona. Yeah, they're everywhere that, down there in oh, San Diego. Oh, they're everywhere, dude. You know, yeah. San, San Diego. Seagulls, we, everywhere, we there's wa- anywhere there's water. There, there's just so many, so many freaking seagulls in San Diego. It's yeah. right. So. No, but I. Someone told me that deer like cigarette butts. So when you throw your cigarette up, uh, cigarette butt off the window up north, up in Hayward. You might be causing a deer versus car accident because if the deer like the cigarette butts, they're going to come to the road to find the cigarette butts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe if people didn't litter their cigarette butts out their car windows, there wouldn't be as many deer versus car accidents because the deer wouldn't be coming so close to the road. Just a thought. I don't know. Maybe I'm onto something. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. But it just seems like common sense to me. Well, and besides that, when you, if you, I remember living up in Hayward. I lived up there for 10 years, up in the northern, north woods, right? Uh-huh. And there were certain years where it was really freaking dry. And they would actually fine you, or the cop could pull you over if he saw you throwing a, lit, a cigarette out your, window, your car window. Because cigarette, they would be like, don't, they, they'd have to put out a warning. It's dry right now. Don't throw it. We can't have any open campfires. We can't have any grills going. We can't have any cigarette butts being thrown out the car window. Good. I, I, right. Throwing that shit out the window. And the if the cigarette butts have been known, lit cigarettes being thrown out the window have been known to cause forest fires. And shit. Right, right. What the hell's wrong with people so, throwing their damn cigarettes? Right. People are window. stupid. They don't, they're just selfish bastards. But, but, Most but, people, I'm sorry to say, are selfish motherfucking bastards. But but speaking of that, today is somebody's birthday. Who is that? That you should know about since you're talking about that. Yes. Smokey Bear. He turned yes. 75 today. Oh, Smokey Bear, yes. yes. Yes, and I am speaking on Smokey Bear's behalf right now. Don't throw lit cigarette butts. Only you can prevent forest fires. Only right, you can prevent That's being a dumbass. Only you can prevent forest fires. That was one of his <laughs> mottos. Only you can Smokey prevent being a dumbass for to yourself. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, uh, Smokey Bear turned 75 today, Capitan, yeah. New Mexico. And by the way, and I know a lot of people say Smokey the Bear. It's not Smokey the Bear. His name it's is Smokey Bear. His name is Smokey Bear. Uh, right, so fire, not Smokey the Bear. Fire prevention icon in the U.S. set to turn 75. Smokey Bear nice. is the icon of the largest, longest-running public service campaign in the U.S. Yeah. is set to turn 75 years and, old. And that, but it happened today. This this article. And you, and you know what's yesterday. sad about that, though? But wait, wait, but wait. Okay. Birthday parties are scheduled to take place this week <laughs> across the country in honor of the bear. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, so Smokey Bear is a good thing, but you know what's sad about that is that people had to be told this stuff, like, don't litter. Only you can prevent forest fires. Like, don't be a dumbass. Like, that should have been one of his phrases. Don't be a dumbass. Right. But, I mean, but this goes, you know, uh, it doesn't go over quite as well. Anyway, I, uh, no, apparently, no, uh, Smokey Bear, a badly burned cub found in the aftermath of a fire in New Mexico's Capitan yeah, Mountain. Yeah, named after a real bear. Later became Smokey Bear. Yeah. So he, he uh, yeah. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Smokey Bear, hooray, happy birthday, Smokey Bear. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, but it's sad that, you know, I mean, I, I like Smokey Bear. I love Smokey Bear. Like, Tok- I, token Bear. Toki you know. Bear. <laughs> right, and they teach dumbasses, like, don't start fires in, like, in the forest. But know? speaking of the Anywhere. forest, like, uh, speaking of the forest and wild animals. Well, it is Smokey the Bear because he's a bear and his name is Smokey, but his real name is actually Smokey Bear. Right. Okay. Yeah. But speaking of... of 
wild animals and the the woods and forest and uh, things that may come after you. Uh huh. Take your uh, take something that's gonna play loud music and, and put the Metallica on. <laughs> Metallica saves the day. Hiker scares off cougar with heavy metal. <laughs> Apparently, this woman, D. Gallant, 45, was walking a few miles into the woods when her dog, Murphy, on July 23rd, with her dog, uh, on July 23rd, when she said she realized they had company. Uh, the dog, oh, Gallant, that's the woman's name, D. Gallant, turned around to see a cougar quietly stalking them. So she was on Vancouver Island, Vancouver Island, Van Vancouver, Vancouver Island, yeah. uh, used the Metallica music for more than just headbanging. The band's heavy metal songs helped scare off a cougar during her hike with her dog. Uh, she was hiking a few miles into the woods with her dog, Murphy, on July 23rd, and she realized that, da -da. Uh, at first, Gallant said she was intrigued, big idiot, because she had never seen a cougar up close. You know, you really don't want to. That's not something you want to see in the wild. You know, <laughs> anyway, once she realized that she had an animal that was getting closer to them, she started to yell, trying to scare the cougar off. Um, the, the cougar had only had finally stopped moving, but it hadn't backed away. Thinking quickly, Gallant pulled out her phone and started blasting the loudest band she could think of, Metallica. The song, <laughs> the, the, the song "Don't Tread on Me," yeah, there you don't go. tread on me. Uh, started playing, uh, acting as a warning to the cougar, according to CNN. Apparently, the heavy metal is not the cougar's genre of choice. Well, the cougar ran off after the first few notes. <laughs> Gee, smart woman. You know, whatever works. You know, whatever Don't works. Don't that on me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, God. Awesome. <laughs> so. Awesome. Uh, all right, anyway, speaking of music, let's play some. All right, let's do that. All right. And we shall return to talk about more things. That we shall. All righty. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Absolutely. As usual. And, uh, it's Friday night. We made it through another week. That's always a good thing. Yeah. There you go. Dig on this. All right, mm. then. Mr. Richie Haven. Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> Ricky Havens from Woodstock there singing Freedom back in 1969. Uh, before that, we had gang band Rockabilly doing uh, Johnny Blue Good Shoes. Uh, Johnny Be Good and Don't Step on My Blue Suede Shoes. Uh, I think they're Spanish. I'm not, I'm not positive exactly where they're from. Uh, but, but I dig that band, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we kicked it off there with Steve Earle doing Copperhead Road. Uh, so, good tunage is. Yeah, barely enough. So, I, I asked in the chat there during that uh, last tune, how many pounds of weed do you think there were at Woodstock? And i got a couple answers here. Maybe a truckload, a ton, a century of weed, uh, like a ton, a shit ton, and Cowboy Tech says, barely enough. <laughs> I like that answer, Cowboy Tech. <laughs> oh, anyway, that Richie Haven song was a Miss Moose Girl request there. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And side note, yes, on that song, he made that up as he went along. Well, because cool. Because the next band that was supposed to be playing after him was late, so he had to like stay up on stage longer. And he he's like, yeah, I just sat up there and played my guitar, just made up these lyrics as I went along. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. So I learned this because I've seen the the music documentary of Woodstock. Yeah, Richie Havens. But PBS is doing a Woodstock documentary right now. It's a three set three part series. Okay. And it's uh, a lot of footage that I haven't seen. I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know about Woodstock. Yeah, and if you guys can watch that at all, it's a good documentary, and you'll see a lot of. It's not. It's not the concert. It's the behind the scenes and all that stuff. Right. And I, and I see a lot of. I've seen a lot of uh, footage from that in that documentary that I have not seen before. 
So if you're ever interested in that, check it out. I mean, I donate to PBS $5 a month. Right. And then I get access to a lot more programming online than I would if I didn't donate. To me, five bucks a month, ain't, that's nothing. You know what I mean? And so I I donate to PBS, my local PBS station, and then I get access to more, more programming. But if you can check it out, I would definitely check out that um, documentary on PBS about Woodstock. Okay. Because this year is the 50th anniversary of it, don't you know? Speaking of 50th anniversaries... Yeah. Um, apparently, uh, yesterday, the day before, is the uh, 50th anniversary of the Tate LaBianca murders. Oh, yeah, the Charles Manson thing. Yeah, and they've been talking a lot about it on various radio shows. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear a lot of disinformation coming out, but... Well, yeah. Um, because they're still buying the corporate line, you the know? The story hasn't changed much though has it no 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 but but okay. people are still out there spewing the stuff and like i said a lot of them are, a lot of them are still spilling the corporate line on that stuff and, uh, what are you doing there hello yeah yeah i heard a bunch oh, okay. of crackling oh. and stuff sorry it's all right <laughs> so yeah I, I find it interesting uh, you know i i uh, i'm interested in the story to a degree um, apparently some of them are still in jail, you know. Uh, some are dead, a lot are, most that's are dead. That's my freaking dog. Who's my, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Who the hell's all that crackling? That's Jackson. Crack. He's playing with his toy. He's bugging me to throw the toy. Can you hear it squeaking? That's Jackson, yeah. <laughs> my son is not home right now, so there's no one else here to pay attention to him. All right, a uh, little, little early tech note here. Mm -hmm. For anybody that's interested, you know, I, I don't know who those people might be, but a, li a little early tech note on uh, okay. the machine that I run my my laptop here, that I that I run um, Vanna and Weatherdork mm -hmm. on, and other stuff that you don't know about, um, uh, that I'll run on there. It was yeah. uh, I was running uh, Mint Linux Mint uh, nineteen point one with the Cinnamon interface. And uh, the, so this week I updated to the my Linux Mint 19.2. Uh, okay. And um, I'm telling you, man, easiest upgrade in the world ever. Oh really? For for cool. updating an entire operating system, it took it took less than like 10 minutes to do. Wow. And, and all it took there's from there's the the little uh, software updater thing there, and it, and it said, hey, there's a new version. You want to update? Update? And I was like. Yeah, I'm a little skeptical, you know, because sometimes it doesn't. Everything doesn't work right. Um, but I said, yeah, go ahead, let's do it. If it breaks, I'll fix it. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, it just ran through the thing, boom, 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 did a reboot, and came up uh, Linux Mint 19.2. Everything's working perfectly uh, with the cinema interface. There's uh, I, nothing too obvious that's different, other than. Uh, the update manager is updated. It does a bunch of nice new stuff um, for you that makes things a little easier. The system reports are they got a new uh, fancy layout there uh, on, on the menu the, for like uh, various things where you might have like multiple text editors instead of just a text editor. It tells you now this one's text edit. This one's uh, uh, Z. Um, uh, as far as for like you know, f files or, or apps that you use a lot. You can now pin those onto your start menu, um, which is the same thing like, like you can do on Windows. Um, they've improved the Samba, which is the uh, Windows sharing kind of thing. So now it's it's easier to share folders and files that way. Um, they they got a better uh, boot repair setup going on. Um, X app improvements, artwork improvements, um, just all kinds of various stuff. And it's it's a long term uh, uh, long term support system or uh, OS, so you can download it and use it, and it, they'll support it until uh, what did it say twenty 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 three, something like that. So for several years now, you still got several years of time. So anybody that's uh, not on Linux Mint yet, or if you're on an earlier version of Linux Mint, um, hey, think about it, D do it, check it out. Uh, for me, I, I, like I said, I was on nineteen point one. So the upgrade was really simple. 
if if you're on an older one, line mint 17 or something, um, it, it may not be quite as easy, but uh, still easy enough. And they give direct, you know, perfect instructions there on their on their deal. So um, check it out. Yeah, you know, mint heads, light Linux, Linux heads. Um, if if you like the mint and cinnamon, it's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> If you're out, of, if you if you just have like an old Windows computer that you want to uh, revitalize, install Mint on there. Super easy. Moose. Yes. Oh, on my computer. Oh, anybody that's got an old oh, yeah. old machine that they want to revitalize, then. Oh yeah, on my yeah. old that my old desktop. Well, whatever. Any any computer, it don't matter. Yeah, it's, I can it, put it, it on could be there a brand. Sure. If you got a brand, if you got a brand new machine, you don't want to infect with Microsoft. Um, you know, brand new state of the art machine. I, I'm going to still suggest Mint. Or I really, if, if you got Maybe an old, if you just buy a brand new machine. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Well, I'm willing to give it a shot. I when I had to, was forced to use Linux because my machine was so my Windows program was outdated and not working correctly. Yeah. I didn't mind it. I liked it. I liked Linux. Yeah, and it, it's so much better now so, than, and you can yeah. run pretty much everything you want on there. You know. Uh, you can't run quite all of your games, but you can run a good, the largest portion of them, and and your your Windows, right. your Windows apps, you know, your whatever, uh, Office or whatever that crap. If if you want to run Office, I, then you can do it on there. But it comes with LibreOffice already installed, and 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 why 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 do that Windows crap? Uh, I know exactly. some exactly. It's so annoying. I know some of you need it for 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 work or whatever. Right. So I understand because that. Some but programs don't work if you have Linux. It no, no, they work. will work. Yeah. They will work. You can run you can run your Microsoft Office on Linux. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Okay. So, um, yeah. So awesome. I, there's there's really very few things uh, that that you can't wind up using uh, on your. Uh, on your Linux computer, whether okay. it, whether it's Mint or not, uh, you know. It, right, it, it, it could does, be any Linux you know, program. An operating system, but yeah. Or operating system. Yeah. Anyway, it's cool. So check it out, man. Hey, Hansel. Wow. <laughs> oh man. So a little, like I said, a little. Yeah, they all fucking partied out there in California because they were all fucking famous and shit, and it was a new neighborhood. So a lot of fucking famous people lived in Laurel Canyon. Doesn't mean shit. Yeah, well, apparently there were some connections. Back in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Apparently there were some connections on that um, between uh, Mike Love and the people at the LaBianca house. They they, they kind of knew each other somehow through a right. uh, record producer. And the record yeah, producer was, was, was uh, supposed to be there that night or whatever. And... Manson was pissed off at the record producer because he totally snubbed well, him. Well, Manson sucked as a performer. Right, he was he, right. he thought he was a musician, but he wasn't. Right. So so anyway, so Manson met the, the record producer. Uh, I think it was through Mike Love. It might have been one of the. Oh, it might have been Wilson, uh, the, the drummer. Okay. Um, one, one, one of the other Beach Boys. Um, anyway, so he he knew the record producer through that guy, and he met the record producer at the Beach Boys house there. And, oh, okay. And and that producer uh, was excited about was excited about Manson and listened to to uh, some of his music and then said no, I can't I can't I can't I can't make a record out of that sorry dude right right and so yeah. Man so he Manson sucked. so Manson was pissed off and 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 yeah. and he knew that that record producer frequented that house that that uh, La Bianca King okay. house okay um, although he also knew that he wouldn't be there that night right um, so and. No, what happened was Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski moved into that house, and it was unbeknownst to this dude. So this guy is, I mean, he was, I don't think Tate was supposed to be the one that was supposed to be murdered. They no, thought no, it was, it was another, another guy. I, there. I forget who the producer's name it was. It was Doris was. Day's kid. But uh... Doris Day's son. I'm talking about something that happened back in the 60s. 70s. It was Doris Day's son who was a record producer, and he had lived at that house where that tape where it happened, where the murder happened. Right. 
And the other guy, uh, one, one of the other guys uh, in Manson's group there is top guy or whatever. Yeah, um, Jerry Melcher. And he had he had been to that house and he knew, so he kind of knew how the, the house was laid out and all that. Um, yeah, I mean he. Oh my God! What do you got now? What? Are you talking to me? Oh my God! He's got. He's got glow sticks. Oh my God! He's got fifteen. What is he going to do? Toxic. What are you going to a rave, buddy? Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to a rave? What are you going to do with them? <laughs> oh shit! Well, I'm sorry. Uh, it's playing. You know, you click on the story and the video starts playing. Yes. A couple times only. Three times. Graham, are you there? Yeah. Sorry about that. My son came home, and, you know, it's a distraction. It's life. It's how it goes, even when you're broadcasting on a show, you know. No, I'm, I don't care. It's just, you know, it's life. You know, I have life here. I have kids and dog and, you know. Right. You're not in the studio or nothing. Exactly. So, sorry, people. Sorry, Graham. It's but anyway, right. talking about Doris Day's son... He lived at that house before the Tate, before Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski did. Right. Apparently. So he was, like, saved because they think he was the target. Okay, it was my they understanding. They think he was the target, but... It, it was my understanding they knew that that producer was not going to be there that oh, night. Oh, they did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that could be, too. I don't but, know. But, but they they selected the house because they knew there was some other rich people there that did it. Right, like. right. And and they knew the they knew the layout of the house. It ended up being Sharon Tate who was eight months pregnant. Yeah. That is disgusting, people. What those people did to those people is totally wrong and disgusting. <laughs> it's freaking and gnarly. Murder and fuck them. You know what? Bullshit. I don't. You know, oh, they were tripping on acid. I'm sorry. No, they were not tripping on acid. Well, who cares? Uh, yeah. yeah. No. I've tripped if on they I've were, tripped on yeah, acid. I, I've tripped on acid many times, and I never wanted to go out and kill and kill, kill people and smear words on the wall in their blood. Exactly. And, right. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> yeah. People no. The up. acid thing is bullshit. You yeah. know, they were just that Charles Manson's evil, dude. But well, he's dead. And he so it was in to, no, he's still alive. No, didn't he just die recently? Did he die? I'm oh, sure he, he did died. die in prison finally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we talked about that, but anyway. um... Yeah, he was the the um what do they call that? Like the, the igniter, you know, the mastermind behind it. Yeah. All. Oh yeah, two years ago he died. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. All right, is Gooberzilla? Yeah. Goober, are you here? Do I do I see Goober anywhere? Uh, he he joined, but he hasn't been talking. No. All right, I don't see a Goober, but this story's for you, Goober. When are they going? Where's our spaceships? When are they going to build our spaceships? Yeah, man. Well, here you go from Motherboard Vice dot com. Romanian engineers have created a fully functional flying saucer. Oh. <laughs> it's not. It's not really. I mean, it is, but it, but it's not. It's, it's not a spaceship. Anyway, okay. um, all, the all directional flying object is proof of concept that. That's the result of more than two decades of engineering work, which is hard for me to believe because it's really nothing. But And it's kind of cool. It looks like a flying turtle, if you ask me. Anyway, against a clear blue sky, a craft that looks strikingly similar to the two pie plates stacked atop each other suddenly ascends into the air, swiftly charging forward as the object passes by. It's nearly impossible not to suddenly feel a kinship with the pilot, Kenneth Arnold. However, unlike Arnold in his famous 1947 flying saucer sighting, this yeah. particular flying object is not unidentified. Instead, it's the brainchild of the Romanian engineer, Rob von Sable, and the aerodynamics Isof Tapasu, <laughs> who, who claim they've developed a fully functional flying saucer. Which, okay, it is a fully functional flying saucer, but it's basically a drone. It's not going to go out in outer space. No, it, it's basically a drone. Uh, right. It, it doesn't have yeah. any anti-gravity or... No, I can't get through you know, that light, fucking belt. Light, light pulse drive or anything like that. 
Right. Anyway, so <laughs> without question, the all-directional flying object, or a DIFO, uh, looks exactly like the stereotypical flying saucer. However, mm -hmm. a DIFO's creators say the inspiration for their uniquely shaped craft doesn't come from UFO lore. Instead, uh, they say they are it is designed to mimic the back cross section of a dolphin's airfoil. Uh, okay. Well, it, that's yeah. not what it's called. It's called a fin, ain't it? I don't know. Uh, and, 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 a dolphin, it's called a fin, not an airfoil. All right. Well, whatever. That's what they're calling it here. In uh, the first interview with the American media, inventor Razan Sable said a diffo isn't the work of audacious mad science. The aerodynamics behind this craft is the result of more than two decades of work and is very well reasoned in hundreds of pages and confirmed by computer simulations and wind tunnel tests. Uh, Sable explained, Sable's partner, Isof Tapuso, uh, the former scientist at Romania's National Institute for Aero... I can't say that word. Some kind of aer aerodynamic research and head of theoretical aerodynamics at the National Aviation Institute on paper, the duo does not appear to be a pair of rogue backyard engineers or hobbyists uh, operating like a quadcopter. Like I said, it's a drone. Um, a defo takes off, uh, handles takeoff, landing, and slow speed maneuvers through four ducted fans. Uh, the pair of jet engines is located at the rear of the flying disc to provide horizontal thrust. Uh, Sable says the uh, dual propulsion system can vector individually, affording the Adifo a high degree of agility during light level flight. Uh, rounding out Adifo's unique design are a pair of lateral thrust no nozzles located on each side of the disc, which allow it, the disc to rapidly push itself sideways in either direction and quickly rotate while in flight. Anyway, let's check out the rest of it here. they got a bunch of drawings, and uh, I think there's a video somewhere in there, too of it flying around, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, what you would think of when you think of a flying saucer. It's not, uh, you're not going to go into space with it. At least not this one, not yet. No. Not, not that it won't eventually be able to, uh, right. re reach, reach space if they come up with a, a better propulsion system, but, uh, using, you know, fans and, and jet engines and things like that. Uh, you, you might be able to get to low orbit at best. Uh, I, I would right, say on that. right. You're not going to get to what's that belt called? Kuiper belt. No, the belt in space. You got to go through. You got a Kuiper belt. And then there's, some, there's some another word for it. That's that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. There's another name for it, isn't there? What I don't do you know. Call it Kuiper belt. I I think so. <laughs> oh. No! <laughs> There's another term for it, I thought. It starts with an R or something. Uh, never mind. I don't know. I've, I've never heard Kuiper Belt before. I've heard a different word for it. All right. Here we go. According to... Asteroid um, Belt or something? I don't know. Uh, 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 according to Wikipedia, which you can all trust, um, <laughs> uh, the, the Kuiper Belt, occasionally called the Edgeworm Kuiper Belt, is a hmm. circumstellar disk. The Van Allen belt. That's, thank you, Rob. Okay. That's what I was A circumstellar disk in the outer solar system extending from orbit of Neptune. Da 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 da. Anyway, you could read about the Kuiper belt. So, yeah, you're talking about the Van Allen. Okay. Yes. That, that's, that's a radiation belt. Yeah, that's, that's totally. And how do you get through that and survive? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, radiation. You don't. Radiation suit. Uh, right. <laughs> like, that's why the, astro the astronauts wear those uh, huge suits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, so there you go. Ahead. There you go, Goober. Well, there's your flying saucer. Yeah. Well, All right, so this happened August 9th. This is updated August that's today. 9th. This happened August 8th. That's yesterday. Uh, Wisconsin attendant removed from flight, charged intoxication. <laughs> so, and then just the other day, there was a pilot that was in Minneapolis and was drunk on a flight, too. Yeah, well, they drink a lot. Apparently. So, you know, a flight attendant to sh on a Chicago to South Bend, Indiana flight has been charged with public intoxication. 49-year-old Julianne March of Waukesha, Wisconsin, faces an August 29th initial hearing after being charged Thursday. Court documents say March uh, was part of an Air Wisconsin crew working on August 2nd. 
United expressed flight when passengers became scared for their lives due to her apparent medical condition. <laughs> yeah, she was drunk. When the plane landed, they removed her from the plane. She had a blood alcohol content of point two zero, which is that's pretty fucking high. She did. She thought she was still in fucking Chicago. Yeah, that's that's pretty fucking high. Yeah, she is fucked up. So just be on the lookout if you do fly, which I haven't for over ten years. Um, be on the lookout for drunk pilots and, and drunk stewardesses. Yes. Call because, them flight attendants I mean, if you want, but they're stewardesses. Yeah, and the pilot, the drunk pilot, he was even, the story was on Daily Mail, so you don't want to be being drunk and being a pilot. <laughs> well, they have these bars, you know, in the airports, right? Yeah. So it's really easy for them because they have access to the the, the private bar at the, in the airport. All the pilots do, right? Right, and they, and they got all the they got all the little bottles of alcohol on the plane there too. Sure, yeah. So they have access to alcohol. So you know, if you were, you know, I understand you got to fly certain places, but really make sure you're flying safely. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, a drunk stewardess isn't as bad as a drunk pilot, though. Yeah. You know, a drunk stewardess is just a fucking, she can't steer your drinks or whatever, you know. Right. But a drunk pilot, that's when you have to really worry. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, I just, uh, that was in the news this week, so I thought I'd share that wonderful story. Of course, she's from Wisconsin. All right, so, uh... You know, yeah, like... We have a lot of drunks in Wisconsin. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna say it's the facts. It's true. You know, I mean, there's drunks everywhere, but Wisconsin just seems to have a lot of them. I don't know why, but they do. Right. So anyway, um, this is from the fifth, which was uh, Monday. All right. Yeah. Um, Israel has a space has a, a space operation. What do you, what do you call it? Like NASA, except it's the Israel version, and and they launched this thing to go up to the moon, um, and they were going to land on the moon, but it crashed. It did. It didn't land. But the, on this on this thing, they were they were flying out there to the moon. And they had these these little critters in it called tardigrades, which are uh, water bears. Um, and they believe they believe that those things survived and are now there on the surface of the moon. Now, these little tardigrades, they can survive. They can last. They can live for a long time um, with with no oxygen and no water, uh, anything like that. But they're out there and they're on the surface of the moon. And and I think that um, these things could, could grow into something with, you know, the radiation and such. That, right. That that goes out there on the moon. Let me see if I can get this on the screen here. Okay, there it is. Um, it'll show up on your screen in a minute. And, and yeah. that's that's what they look like. But they're tiny. You know, they're like millimeters. You know. Oh yeah, these things. Oh god, yeah, they're yeah. ugly too. But but can you imagine? But but can you imagine if these things affected? And, and there is water there on the moon, which would allow them to grow. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, and it's under the surface, but that's fine for them. They don't care. Well, um, it looks scary. <laughs> but can you imagine these things out there on the moon being affected by all that solar radiation? Right. And growing into huge critters. Yeah. And they'd be like a big old blob or something. No, just looking like they do, man. Just... Well, like they, like, let's say they're the size of a Macy's balloon in the parade, you know, the Macy's Thanksgiving parade. They're yeah. that big. Yeah, so so you can have these things, you know, like twenty feet tall out there. And it looks and so, like that that mouth or that snout can like suck you right in. Yeah, that's that's their eating hole. Yeah, that can suck you right in. <laughs> and they got those claws and such. Like I said, they're tiny. You know, they're, they're like they're like they're like Sorry, microscopic. But uh, so so now 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 the that Israel has infected the moon with these things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if I have a nightmare about these things, Ram, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be like uh, upset. I'm going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, you know, I can just picture that in my <laughs> dreams now. This giant fucking thing coming at me. <laughs> well, unless you fly to the moon, I think you're probably okay. Right, right. Uh, or if, you know, maybe one of these things figure out how to make it through space. Um, right. Back, back to Earth, uh, or a bunch of them, you know, like a whole herd of them, like uh, something from Starship Troopers. You ever see that movie? Yes. Yeah, I remember that, and the bugs were, were firing... Firing stuff at the earth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, now these water bears or tardigrades are, are up there on the moon. Thank you, Israel, so much for that. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Way to go. Oh, man. Way to give me nightmares now. <laughs> There are, there are some creepy critters, <laughs> you know. Quite yeah, the, I mean they're small right now, but if they're giant, that yeah. one could, could be scary. Like I said, man, we we know what happens when when uh, hell. Just look at Godzilla. What happened there from the radiation? Right. Yeah. Got giant, got gigantic. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> scary stuff, Grim. Oh. Scary. The thing of nightmares. Oh, 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 oh. Speaking of things in yes. space and such. Okay. From Sputniknews.com. <laughs> Area 51 raiders could find underground city below <laughs> b b <laughs> below the top secret base in Alien oh Hunter claims. Oh, my God. Yes, the Alien Hunter claims. Uh, so over 2 million users have already RSVP'd to the Alien Hunting Facebook event encouraging to storm the most secretive military base in the U.S. of A., where, per passionate conspiracy theorists, the government is housing ETs. Now another truth seeker claims there might be an underground city... Keyword be being might... Uh, be be beneath, beneath the notorious Area 51... Uh, Blake Cousins, a renowned conspiracy theorist from Hawaii, running the YouTube channel Third Phase of Moon, claims the former Area 51 employees confided in him that there was an underground city below the famed U.S. military base, which is located in the Nevada desert. If one person or a group of people were able to get in and open the doors into the subterranean levels, you will see a huge underground city that has never been be seen before on our planet, as if it's your planet. Come on, man. Anyway, this is something so big that the, under, uh, that the ground level Area 51 is just the tip of the iceberg. The subterranean level would have, have to be at least 50 stories down, from what I hear, and they extended up to the Pacific Ocean and other parts of the U.S., he told the Daily Star. It's my understanding that, yes, there are underground tunnels going from Area 51 out here into New Mexico, right there to Dulce, um, and then the Dulce connects right on up to the uh, Denver airport. Uh, and oh, it, yeah, I believe that. And, and it goes other places, too, I'm sure. No, and, I mean, I believe it, but I just don't, they, they could still be using that, but they're not going to allow anybody to get near it, if that's no, true. Of course if that's not. true. You're right. Anyway, during the conversation with the media outlet, the Alien Hunter, whose channel bursts with videos about US military, the U.S. military facility, further asserts that ex-workers entered into contact with an alien at J-Rod, an ET base that was supposedly held at Area 51. He was an alien being who was brought here from the Roswell crash, he continued, referring to the 1947 incident where a U.S. Army Air Force weather balloon, ha, <laughs> right, <laughs> crashed at the New Mexico ranch. At the time, many ufologists began ex ad advancing conspiracy theories, claiming that it was the remains of an alien spacecraft. It absolutely was. Um, uh, Blake dropped the bombshell speculation, as more than two million people are readying to re <laughs> Ain't nobody readying to raid out there. They just signed up on Facebook for a goof. Anyway, uh, readying to raid the top secret base on the 20th of September after a now viral Facebook event dubbed Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop Us All, uh, kickstarted an alien hunting craze online. 
Uh, anyway, since the joke has apparently gotten out of hand, the U.S. government uh, does not seem to be so amused. They never are. The U.S. government has no sense of humor whatsoever. Um, so, bear in mind, if you actually are stupid enough to try and raid Area 51, you're more than likely you're going to die. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> More than likely, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, no, you would. Don't. I wouldn't. Why even do it? Oh, you're not gonna nobody... find nothing. You're not gonna get in there. They're not gonna let you get yeah, close. You, know, to you know, just gonna... set yourself up to be murdered. You know who's gonna show up there? Weird fucks. No, tons of media and a few weird fucks. Right. Okay. And, yeah. And, and they're gonna right. interview these weird fucks as if these are normal people. That Which are, they aren't. That are out there looking for actual uh, UFOs and, and other spacecraft and aliens. Which they're not. Because right, a real no. ufologist would never go out to there. Right, they wouldn't. Okay, That's Flash, stupid. you send, send yeah. pictures back or do some live streaming video. Because cause I, I dig on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please do it. We can watch your dumb fucking asses. Uh, so your birthday September 20th there, Flash? Flasher? I know it's oh. in September. I wasn't not sure what day. Yeah, but... Flash. Something to look forward to. Yeah, that's, that's a good B-Day present. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there yeah. you go, Flasher Rudy. You go out there and shake tentacles with an alien, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No. It, plus, it's based on a joke, on me. It, yeah, it was just somebody. like, oh, yeah. Some guy thought it was funny, put it up there, and then all of a sudden, boom! Right. Oh, yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Like, you fucking dumb fucks. <laughs> really? Yeah, all and right. all of us is probably going to be there. I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, it's, the guy's already outed himself. He's Elvis like, I'm the one that started this. Elvis don't have to go. People he lives there, man. Right? But people took it out, you know. It's like... Yeah. All right, anyway... um, Music. This is a gal by the name of Allie Venable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a great movie, man. Uh, that's the, uh, Zombieland 2, double tap there, uh, coming out in October. Um, <laughs> the first Zombieland was great. So yeah. that one, I, I look forward to that. Of course, I won't be able to see it for like a year after it's out because, right. <laughs> you know, until it, it takes time to get to like Amazon. Uh, yeah, it does. Anyway, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. So that, that that should be great. Anyway, before that, we saw, heard, saw The Pretty Reckless, of which mm -hmm. Taylor Momsen is the lead singer of The Pretty Reckless, doing a song called Take Me Down. That was I a. Liked it. That was a frumpy request. Frumpy noses. Fr frumpy noses, hot women. I liked it, Frumpy. And we kicked it off uh, there with Allie Venable and that chick can shred, doing Cal oh, yeah. doing California dreaming on the bands on the butte in Hemingford, Nebraska, or bands on the butt if you prefer, uh, in <laughs> Hemingford, Nebraska. So uh, yeah, that says good shit. Uh, uh, fun, fun, fun music and all of that. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, man, cool. So, Zombieland 2, double tap. <laughs> that should be good. And the rules. Oh, don't forget the rules. <laughs> right. You, you don't want to you, you, you forget the rules when you're hunting zombies. Right. It's important. It can save your life. <laughs> it's crazy shit that's been going on. It's like I I don't want to talk about any of it hardly because it's just like I'm so sick of it. Uh, yeah. These false flag shootings and the, I mean the one yeah you guys someone criticized me for looking at a sott dot net site today. Oh, oh, because they well, want to. I don't to, care. They, I they, mean, they but you know what? The video clip that they had on there was like from CNN or something. So they they only want you to look at absolutely pure uh, uh, mainstream clap exactly. sites. Exactly. 
So, um, but anyway, the clip that they had, the video clip that they had on that link, yeah, was a Spanish woman or a woman that spoke Spanish, and she said there was four shooters that came in there in the Walmart, and they were all dressed all in black. She was speaking Spanish, so you, you know, unless you really know how to understand Spanish, you you can verify if she if that's what she actually said, but... Right. I mean... It, it goes right along the whole... This is a fucking false flag, people. Okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No question but about they, that. You know, when people are... Eyewitnesses are saying, yeah, there was four shooters that walked, ravaged into the Walmart, ravaged into the Walmart and started shooting up the place. Now, I heard on the radio... But re- then they say, oh, it was a lone gun. Lone wolf is like... Fuck you. I, 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 was, I was listening to the radio today, and, and the guy said, uh, I forget the guy's name down there. Well, who's the guy, shooter guy down there? Uh, I in, don't know his In name. El Paso, I, whatever. They, they just put it on some, they picked some guy out. And I'm not right, say, You're okay. Gonna well, the, what the radio guy said today was, uh, this guy, 31 years old. And I was like, yeah. what, what? He's not 31 years old. Right. He's doing the thing for trade. But, but they may be changing the story. Um, because, you know, you saw that one picture that showed uh, the guy supposedly walking in there with the guns, and then he showed the, they showed the guy being arrested, and it was it was totally a different guy. Uh, yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, and this is how they do the it. They, they just fool you with this bullshit. Oh, that's the, that's, you put the post in the same, the same link. Yeah. I'm looking for the one from Sot. I, yeah. I thought that was the right one. But. That, that was not the right one. All right, well, while you look for that, let me cover this little bit here for you. This It's the right one, but they erased the story. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. Here it is. I right. found it finally. All right, all right. Oh, my God. Okay. So here's the thing. Okay. This is from uh, a Twitter person, Ginga Fridge, Ginga Fried. I don't know, whatever. Um, Connor Betts, that was the uh, the, uh, the Ohio the shooter. El Paso, right? No, the Ohio shooter, Connor oh, the Betts. Ohio. Yeah, I get them uh, mixed up. Anyway. There's so many of them. So Connor Betts' mother, Moira, um, owns MindSerm, a company that has had government contracts with DARPA, has 81 employees and an estimated annual revenue of $27.3 million. Yet, she manages a bath and body works. Uh, safe to say that might be a cover, and there's a graphic here showing you the links from point A to point Z on that particular thing. Um, this woman was involved, just like the the kid uh, in in El Paso. Uh, his father was also involved in the government uh, uh, in, in uh, some of those uh, FBI contracts and such. Um, so and it always seems to be that way, doesn't it? That that somehow these people are involved in one way or another uh, in, in these in these false flags. Uh, they 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 all do their you know whatever. They're all in, they're all connected with it. Um, also, I saw that one of the uh, the father from the the Florida Parkland shooting, I guess. Um, he was down there in El Paso at the time of the shootings, um, and he was supposed to be dedicating a wall or some kind of crap like that, a image on a wall, a painting, some kind of deal like that. Um, so anyway, take a look in that in that tweet there. Go in there and and open up that graphic. Uh, take a, take a look at that graphic there, um, because uh, and, and zoom in on it. And you can see that this woman, Mo- Moira Kathleen Betts, um, yeah. op- owns this MindSerm technology company, which has had all these contracts with DARPA. Um, and, and then it shows down below, okay, so she's managing a Bath and Body Works, and she's making $23 million or $27 million annually from, from this other company. Oh. So, something they, something, something they track in here. Something's wrong. Um, <laughs> there's some serious uh, problems here. Now there was another another link that I that somebody had put up there, showing that Connor Betts had died back in uh, 2014. I'll just go to my email. But but it was the wrong Connor Betts. 
um, even though whoever had posted that other one up uh, changed the photo in the obituary so that to, to try and make it look like the, this other Connor Betts that died was who was 22 years old. Um, yeah. What well, was was the same guy as the shooter, but he did, that but died in 2014. But that was incorrect information. And thank Cowboy Tech for debunking that one. Um, it's on <laughs> Sundays. What? What? Sundays? Sunday, Sorry, Sunday, I was Sunday. talking to my son here. No. All right. Hang on. He... <laughs> oh, it is fun in fantasy land. <laughs> now, apparently, um, because the the Trumpster, the anti right, the anti gunner named Donald Trump, um, mm -hmm. spoke out the other day about against video games. Did you hear that? Yes. Did, did, did your boys, your big video gamer boys? No, I didn't hear it. They didn't mention it to me, and I didn't hear about it, but I heard he said something about video games. Yeah. About oh, playing yeah. video games when he's shooting. Oh, yeah, Matt did say something. He said, Mom, video games are not to blame <laughs> for all these shootings. Okay, okay. Well, here's an article from today. Um, apparently, since Walmart, where one of the shootings took place, Right. Sells uh, video games, and they also sell guns. Yes. Walmart has decided to remove the violent video game images, but they're not removing Yeah, but not the guns. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it says Walmart is removing displays of violent video games and movies in its stores as pressure mounts for the world's largest retailer, to act in the wake of the two deadly shootings and its locations in Texas and Mississippi in recent weeks. Now, um, on the thing that I got, got a little, uh, I don't know, whatever, stupefied about apparently uh, on Twitter, there was a, a hashtag trending, um, boycott Walmart because they won't stop selling guns. Uh, and the thing to me is, Walmart's been doing a lot of terrible things to a lot of places, to the, all of your United States for years, decades now. And and they've been destroying Main Street America. They've been killing mom and pop stores. Yeah. They've been killing a lot of yeah. the other, other big, big the stores. They're destroying mom and pop Main Street and, America. And those, yeah. and those people never had any problem with Walmart doing all that destruction. But now this one, right. um, apparently this is a thing. So, uh, Flash somebody, of course he's joking, but he says yeah, he, 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 bl he blames video games for, for all of the shootings, too. Um, yeah, Pac-Man. Pac Pac-Man was pretty violent, uh, I recall. Yeah, Pac-Man. You, know, you, had, you had to send this little guy out there to eat these ghosts. Yeah, right. That was, it's that's, like, that's, that's so violent. Pretty, no, pretty, today, it looks like when my son, I go down to the basement to do laundry, and I, I look in on my son... And it looks like he's like in the game, you know, sure. and shooting people, and it looks like a war scenario. It's nothing like Pac-Man. No, it's I like an actual. You're in a movie. You I know, know I, mean? I know, Moose. <laughs> but I'm not saying it's caught. It does not. I mean, back when Tipper Gore was in the the vice president's wife. She banned albums. They yeah. had to put like a warning label on goddamn music. Which because, only? Oh, she's which, like, oh. Which, which, which of, which of course they those. They blamed the fucking shit on the music back then. Now they're blaming it. It's like, give me a fucking break, people. Which, which of course those warning labels only made those records sell better. Right. It's like <laughs> you fucking dumb fucks. You can't control. See, control freaks suck so bad. And in order to be a politician. I think you have to be a control freak, dude. And you I, want to tell people what to do. You ha you get some fucking sick fucking satisfaction from telling people what to do. Right, right. And put you put you in a put a narcissist, which they're mostly narcissists. Put them in a position of power and look the fuck up, because they'll fuck everything up, dude. Cause it's all about them. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's all about the person. It's not about you. They don't. They'll tell you, "Oh, I care about my people, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that." But you know what? 
once they get that position, that all goes out the window, all those promises they made, and the position goes right to their head. They're like, I'm in power now. You know? Right. And it, it goes right to their fucking head. And that's the problem with the political system we have right now, because it's full of narcissists. But 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 uh, take this on there, Trump it's fans. You 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 Trump fans. <laughs> Trump asks social media companies to develop pre-crime algorithms. So <laughs> this is this is meddling. This is getting too much into your goddamn business. Pre-crime. Okay, someone said, "Oh yeah, we live in a free country," and I'm like, you know what? When I have to pay to drive, to have this license, I have to pay to fish, I have to pay to fucking do all this shit. That is not freedom. I have to pay property taxes to live in this house, even though it's paid off. To pay for the lot, I pay $250 a month rent. That goes to the property tax. So fuck you and t by telling me this is some free country. Right. Oh, you have internet. Yeah, guess what, buddy? The internet ain't fucking free. No, I have and, to fucking pay for it. Everybody bitch. all around the world, people have the internet. Right. If I didn't want ha want to pay for my internet, I'd have to go to the library and use it, okay? Yeah. Yeah, there's free internet, but not in your house. No, you have to pay for that service. I have to pay for phone service. I have to pay for cell phone service. I have to pay property tax. I have to pay tax on my food and tax on my clothes and tax on mobile. It's like, don't tell me this is some free country. Right. It's like, what the fuck? Well, uh, let me let me let me just say okay, this about sorry, the. Right. I, I want to talk about the the Trumpster for a minute or two. Yeah. Um, because see. I think the his banning of the bump stocks. You know, he banned the bump stocks. Right? Yeah, that, that was no okay. big deal. No, that no, was right, right. That, that's thing. that. That's what. Like that's that's that, no, 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 no. It was a huge deal. Because it was, to me, it didn't seem like it because not very many people use those. Right, not many people use those. So go ahead and ban them. Right. Right. Just make that little infringement exactly. upon people's rights to use those, and see how your supporters react. And the Trump right. fans were said just what you just said. No big deal. We don't care. He could take this little right. Well, now he's going to go after more of the gun rights. He's, a, he he's an anti-gunner. He wants to uh, impose the, the the background checks. He wants to go after the assault weapons. And yeah, now I saw that the background checks will be more more intense. Right. And and, and now and also uh, more mental health checks. All this crap. Yeah. Anyway. Know. Come on. Anyway, so so now he wants the social media companies to develop these pre-crime algorithms. Oh uh, my God! So pre-crime. Well, well, they already probably have them developed already. Well, uh, pre-pre-crime, you know, you know. Right. No, we talked about that before when you said that they're gonna do like I don't know how long ago it was recent though. Yeah. There was another story similar that you know they were working on this so, this so, technology right to predict. What people are going to do. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And and also these stupid red flag things, man. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nah. They're so fucking obvious. Dude. But, but, but Trump's going to push all those through, man. And, well, yeah. and, and. But and, he's the and, savior, no, dude. But, but. He's exposing all these people. It's like, give me a fucking goddamn break. He's friends with these fucking people. All, all the Trump bootlickers are going to say, <laughs> well, it's a good idea. They yeah, should be doing that. And it's, Fuck. it's like they they'll be saying it's a good idea right up until uh, the these these jackboots come up to their house and take their guns right. because somebody said this guy likes Trump he's dangerous he's mentally unstable he likes yeah. Trump so you were going to call a red flag on him and and you better go and, and take his weapons and there's nothing you can do about it and they come and take your weapons under these red flag rules and then if you somehow can okay. prove, right. you can somehow prove you're not crazy like they're saying you are. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Maybe you could go out and buy no, new but weapons. You have the red flag, dude. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna ask you the question. No, they're this not. Is like Nazi Germany, people. <laughs> this is like this is no different than Nazi Germany. They're they're okay. not gonna ask you the Your question. Red flag, quote unquote. 
You're but, fucked. Dude. But but if somehow you can find a way to prove through who knows what that you're not a crazy person, you don't get your weapons back you under that. They under won't that. give you that. That you chance, will. They, you will not give you your weapons back under that. All um, right. So what I want to say to everyone right now. I mean, I mean, it's not that important. But if you want to see what it could be like, watch um, The Man in the High Castle or The Handmaid's Tale. Man in the High Castle's on Amazon. Handmaid's Tale's on Hulu. Watch those and then get back to me. Yep. They, Flash, me Flash, Flash has a video there. Armed man shot, killed by officers serving red flag protective orders. Of course. Order. If you're red flagged, you're fucked, dude. Yep. You're so, fucked. So Trump's going to push all this, and all of his supporters are going to bend down and say, well, thank you so much for yeah. keeping us safe. Right. Uh, it's disgusting. It's ridiculous. It's it is. dystopian. <laughs> like, it, both the shows I described, Man of the High Castle and Hammond's Tale, right. both of those shows are dystopian versions of what it might have been. Like, the Man in the High Castle, basically, it's based on the fact that the Nazis won World War II. Okay? And then the Handmaid's Tale is basically the same thing. It's basically these religious fucking zealots, you know, like, super religious. And, like, the birth rate was dropping. So the, they created this, like, new world where they hire these women to have their kids for them. It's really weird, but it's a really good. I mean, both of these things, I mean, both of these shows show what it could be. Right. If we let this go too far, which it's already gone too far, in Absolutely. my opinion. Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. let's play some more music here, and uh, we'll come back and talk about something. <laughs> we'll figure something out. I'm sure we will. We oh, always do. man, I tell you. We never run out of material because no. the world's so fucking crazy and fucked up. It is. It's an insane world. We, yeah, we never run out of material, so. Yeah. This is uh, the Texas Hippie Coalition. THC. THC. Baby. THC. Thank you very much. Joe Bonamassa, Miss Kate requests there. Bird on a Wire, live from New York, Beacon Theater. Before that, we had Queensryche off of their new one. Is it out yet? I'm not sure. Uh, yes, it came out on the fir uh, March 1st of this year. So that is off Queensryche new album, and it's called Bent. And we kicked it off there with Texas Hippie Coalition. That was a uh, sock puppet or cyborg noodle request there. Uh, doing a moonshine. Uh, good stuff there. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, Hansel, you're so confused about life in general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's all right, man. Superiority complex. That goes, uh, I'm not going to get into it, it's too late. Maybe <laughs> another show. Yeah, maybe another show. Yeah. But, um, it, it's a crazy motherfucking shit world. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Yeah. I knock on wood daily, like, okay, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I mean, wow. But I did see a comment in the chat. It is an interesting time to be alive. You know, to be here and right. seeing all this shit. <laughs> I don't know, but see this for chart. Oh, yeah, they worked their asses off. Who did? Status worked hard to get where they are. And I hate status. Status suck. <laughs> status are narrow-minded fucking pieces of shit. 
And that's and that's being nice. Yes, it is. And uh, <laughs> you know, I don't have anything nice to say, so I probably shouldn't say it. But uh, you're whack, dude. You got it all ass backwards. You have you're There's... probably a narcissist because you have no empathy. In order to be a killer, a good killer, you have no empathy. But. So you're able to just fucking shoot somebody down and kill them and not feel bad about it. Hey, oh, here, let me let me cover this story about a right. a massive okay. statist, probably probably uh, one of Hansel's idols. Mm-hmm. Probably. Sean Hannity. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, he has no, a, what a he, anyway, go ahead. he he has a plan to solve gun violence, which involves. Guns literally everywhere. Okay. But not you and I having guns. Oh no! No no no! No, no. of course not. No. F- Fox News host. Not the average person. Fox News host took some time on Monday to indulge in a police state fantasy. Oh great! Oh wonderful! <laughs> How lovely is that? So it says there, as is the case after every mass shooting, America is fighting over what to do about gun violence. Following massacres in El Paso and Dayton, they keep leaving out that that uh, that garlic festival one. I don't know why. It's uh, called buy a fucking gun. Anyways, um, Sean Hannity sees himself as a beacon of common sense. Oh, solutions. I'm sure he does because he's a total narcissist. Dude. Uh, on Monday night's edition of Hannity, uh, the first since the attacks, the Fox News host unveiled what he believes to be an ingenious plan to solve gun violence epidemic in the U.S. once and for all. Create a police state. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, here are the details of his vision for change. Position armed guards around the perimeter and on every floor of every school in America. Uh, the armed guards would be retired police and military who donate 15 hours a week of service. Uh, they would be compensated for their time by not having to pay any taxes, no income taxes, blah, blah, blah. This would not be uh, limited to schools. We could do this in stores. We could do this in malls. Uh, pretty much anywhere there is, the public is, courthouses, we could expand it out everywhere. Somehow, despite the loss of tax revenue, the cost of arming volunteers, the cost of insurance, and uh, whatever other expenditures it would take to organize the massive initiative of the plan won't cost us a penny. As a bonus, Hannity seems to suggest that the preponderance of guns would inevitably solve the homicide crisis in cities like Chicago and Baltimore. But he doesn't want you to have guns. No, 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 no. Oh, hell no. He wants the jackboots to have all the fucking guns. <laughs> he wants yeah. to create a 100% total police state. Uh, That's ridiculous. That, but it's but it is Hannity, and like I said, uh, that's the statist of the world for you. That's what they think, how they think, and oh god, it's sickening. All right, let's do this last uh, little bit here. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back eventually sometime, probably next Friday. No, no, we'll be uh, back right after this set. Oh, yeah, after the set, we'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Okay. All right. Enjoy, people. Zip it up. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. Check out these girls. Baby. I'm all <laughs> That's uh, the uh, Southern locals. They are doing their cover of uh, Black Betty. Yeah, that's the name of the band, the Southern locals. Check them out sometime there. And we kicked it off there with ZZ Top doing Gimme All Your Lovin'. The original, the old music video there from that band, that song. Great stuff, huh? <laughs> I should mention, by the way, now I, I don't know how many of y'all were watching the video here tonight, and uh, some of you maybe got a little uh, video disruptions, experience problems, 
um, from time to time throughout watching the video. I, I have been checking out uh, other video streaming formats, and I looked through maybe a dozen so far this week. I found one out of those that uh, is seemed reasonable, other than the fact that I couldn't find a way to embed the video, and it also automatically records the video. And I don't want either of those things to happen. I mean, I want to be able to embed, and I don't want it to record. Um, however, it was based on a blockchain technology uh, type setup, so it looks pretty good, and the quality seems decent. It's something I'm considering, but as yet, no. Um, most of the free streaming video things are porn, which I don't want to stream on a porn site. So, <laughs> anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, tomorrow, you got, the, you got the dork table at noon, and uh, Sunday, I'll be on at noon with the blues. Hal Anthony will follow me at 3 p.m. Eastern uh, with with the behind the woodshed there. Um, hopefully my eye will be better by Monday night, so I don't have to try and squint and read with one, one eye there. Right. Um, uh, do, just do the, the hot compresses room. Yeah, no, I'll do that for sure. But that uh, works really good. Yeah, no, and I've done it before. So you gotta draw, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but you'll be fine. It's yeah. just it, usually they're gone in like a couple of days. Yeah, you check the schedule there on RLM RealLibertyMedia yeah. dot com for all the rest of the shows. Um, have a great weekend. You got anything else, Bruce? No. Uh, just have a great weekend, everyone. All right. We'll see you next Friday. Fight, whatever that is, you yeah, know. That's right. See you next Friday. Yep. Peace. Peace.